Hello everybody and welcome back to Guy with Hacking. This is Prej K and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look into CyberChef and how we can use it to unpack this stager for async rap. So before we get into this, I would first like to give a shout out to MB Research for their description of how this CyberChef recipe works. And without this, this video wouldn't have been possible. Thank you so much. And let's take a look at our binary. So to start, we have the async rat stager within the CyberChef tool, and we can see looking through it that it looks like it's got quite a few commands, and we can see some functions being called, such as string reverse, replace, and a few other functions being defined and then called. So how do we clean this up so that we can read through it easily? So looking through the data, we need to quickly just find some of these characters and change them into their normal ASCII representative. So we'll do this by creating a subsection within CyberChef and then use regex to pull out these characters and then we can do our operations on them. So the regex that we're going to be writing here is the following. And what that's doing is just matching all of these characters here using the literals of character, then matching the integers inside of them and also matching the ampersands that surround them. So now that we have these, we can use the subsection tool to carry out an operation on these subsections of the input. What we'll want to do is match the integer within these character calls. So we'll do this by looking up regex and going and defining it as a user defined regex and then putting in backslash d plus which is just for decimals and that'll match on all of these decimals here afterwards we can just go and put in list matches what we want to do is we want to call from decimal and what from decimal will do is it'll take all of those characters and it will turn them into their ascii counterparts and we can see that the commands here are starting to take shape all we really have to do is just merge it back into the output so finishing with that subsection and once that's done we can go and clean it up a little bit more so looking through the output now after doing these regex and then replacing operations we see that this string of character calls here has been changed into the characters we can start reading that they're no pro plus file exec execution policy and so on and so forth so it's really starting to take shape but we do need to clear up some of these concatenations together as this is what the original file was using to put these character results together. And to do this, we're just going to do a find and replace with more regex. As you can see, I'm using a lot of regex here, and I really recommend the, everybody to learn basically how it works. You don't have to know it off by heart. I still struggle with using it day to day, and I'll always pull up a cheat sheet but it is a very useful tool to be able to specify data that needs to be found. Now that we've done that, you can see that it's completely cleaned up some of those concatenations together and there's ampersands and has put all of the results into a clean string that can start to be read. Now, after this, we just want to call syntax highlighter to be able to beautify some of the syntax within this file. But scrolling through it we see the start of the file and one of the first commands but then we see more functions that call to replace string reverse and so on and so forth so this is the next part that we need to clean up to be able to properly read this so i'm going to take this output and put it into a fresh recipe so that we can go and clean it up even further some of you may be wondering how do you learn malware analysis and how you can do the same as i do in these videos well, if you're prepared to put in the hard work and time, then I recommend that you go and check out the amazing content on the Guided Hacking website. There is an insane amount of technical content specifically regarding reverse engineering. So go check out Guided Hacking as your one-stop shop for all things reverse engineering. So to deal with these string reverse calls, all we're going to do is we're going to create a subsection and we're going to put in a regex of string reverse so that we can handle all calls to string reverse. And this regex just has the string reverse function name, the surrounding parentheses, and then a match of any character with length from 10 to 50. And from this, we'll want to extract the string within the function call. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another regular expression on all of these subsections. And we're just going to put in the following regex. And this regex is just 
matching the two double quotes and then dots dot for any character and star for any length and after this has matched all of them we can just change the output format to list matches and we can see that a lot of this is starting to clean up a little bit but what we want to do is then implement the actual function of string reverse, which will just reverse a string. And all we have to do is just look up reverse within Subchef and we find the reverse function. We can then take the output of this reverse function and merge it back into our Cyberchef output, thus implementing the string reverse function, but replacing the call to it with the output of that call. And we just put in merge and this will merge all of those calls back into our output now next up what we need to do is we need we need to deal with these replace calls and i'll do that within a new recipe so last but not least we're going to deal with the replace calls within our output and instead of the normal way of just taking simply one function parameter and then editing it and replacing the whole thing with the output we need to deal with three which makes this a little bit more difficult but i'll show off another cool tool that can be used within Cyberchef. But first we need to create a subsection like we've done the previous two times. And within this subsection, we just need to put in a regex that will grab the three function parameters from the replace call. And you can see those here. Now these regexes contain square brackets surrounding the matches to define them as groups. And this will become useful later on. But what you need to know is that in regex, you can define capture groups so that you can extract specific pieces of information out of a general match. Before we can deal with those different groups, we need to quickly just escape the strings from the matches because we don't want any non-escape strings setting up our regex. Now, the next and new part of the recipe is going to be register. Now, what register does is it extracts data from the input and stores it into registers which that can then be passed into subsequent operations as arguments. Meaning that we can take our groups here and put them into registers which can be called by different functions within our recipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the same regex within this extractor and that will give us the correct groups. Now, instead of just having the normal regex, we also put these curled brackets around them to define which capture groups we're going to use as our different registers. And you can see within our output example here, we have the normal function parameter one, function parameter two, and then function parameter three, making it very easy for us to now reference and use each of these different parameters. So we're gonna define another regular expression and this will just use a regex of r0 and that's going to be referencing this first function parameter and we can leave all of the other parts of this recipe as they are but just changing instead of highlighting matches to listing the matches so that we can use them next up because we have our first function parameter we can then take the replace function and we're going to re-implement what this function is doing by using this inbuilt find and replace. And again, we're going to reference register one and register two. And we're also going to quickly untick here multi-line matching so it doesn't mess up our search. And dot matches all so that the dot will match any character within the string. So now that we've re-implemented the find and replace, all we need to do is merge all of this back into our output and it's cleaned it up even more. So it's carried out that find and replace. Obviously this still isn't readable, but we can see that there are no more replace calls and we just have some garbled strings here. So after putting our input through all of those recipes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly try and decode some more of these strings here. Now this is just a string encoding method and we can easily get rid of it by pasting it into javascript but before we do that we have some strings that are clear text here and we just want to concatenate them with the encoded string so i'm going to replace each of these ampersands with a plus so that i can copy and paste each line into javascript and it'll do the proper concatenation and decoding for us and i just do this within sublime text but you can do it within cyberchef and then I can take all of these lines 
and I can go into a JavaScript console that is within my browser and copy and paste them. It gives me a little bit of output, but what we can see here is this massive call to get object and a few other calls. And I'm gonna copy and paste one of these and I'm going to put it into JavaScript and we can get the output. And we can see the n32 process star is what this variable actually is representing. And I can take this complete call here and copy it in and we can see that it's win32 process startup. Luckily for me, Matthew has given the output within his coverage on this and we can see that it's just setting some win management impersonation levels, setting win32 process startup and then it will call PowerShell at the end with an execution policy of bypass and the command being within this bat file. So all of this just to execute a bat file. Now I hope that this was a good introduction to how to use Cyberchef to deal with certain types of malware. And until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.